morning and welcome to another episode of Pep's Corner. Today we will continue reading our book, Bud Not Buddy. Our focus and purpose for reading is posted on the screen. We are still in week number 19. This is day number five. Make sure you have your book in hand and are actively following along and reading. Remember, boys and girls, to reread a second time. So you are coming to shared reading, fully prepared to engage in instruction. Let's begin. Chapter six. Uh-oh, my eyes opened and I could see the sun behind the branch of a Christmas tree. I jumped up, folded my blanket inside my suitcase, hid it and started running the six or seven blocks down to the mission. I turned the corner and said, whew, there were still people lined up waiting. I started walking through uh, along the line. The end was a lot farther away than I thought. The line turned all the way around two corners then crossed over one street before I saw the last person. Shucks, I walked up to, up to get behind him. He said, lines closed. These here folks are the last ones. He pointed at a man standing next to a woman who was carrying a baby. I said, but sir, he said, but nothing, lines closed. These here folks are the last ones. It was time to start lying. But if I didn't get any food, now I'd have to steal something out of someone's garbage or I wouldn't be able to eat until the mission opened for supper. I said, sir, I, the man raised his hand. Look, kid, everybody's got a story and everybody knows the rules. The line closes at seven o'clock. How's it fair to these people who've been here since five o'clock that you can sleep? until he looked at his wristwatch until 7 15 then come busting down here expecting to eat you think you got some kind of special privilege just because you are skinny and raggedy look in the line there's lots of folks just like you you ain't the worst supper starts at 6 p.m but you see how things is if you plan on getting fed you better be in line by four now get out of here before I get rough with you. Shucks, being hungry for a whole day is about as bad as it can get, I said. But uh, but he reached in his pocket and pulled something out that looked like a heavy black strap and slapped it across his hand. Uh-oh, here we go again. He said, that's it, no more talk. You opened your mouth one more time too many. You rotten kids today don't listen to no one, but I'ma show you something that'll improve your hearing. He slapped the strap on his hand and started walking towards me. I was wrong when I said being hungry for a day is about as bad as it can get. Being hungry plus having a big knot on your head from a black leather strap would be even worse. I backed away, but only to get two steps before I felt a giant warm hand wrapped around my neck from behind. I looked up to see whose doggone hand was on my doggone big and why I put it around my neck. He put it around my neck. A very tall, square-shaped man in old blue overalls looked down at me and said, Clarence, what took you so long? I got ready to say, my name is not Clarence. Please don't choke me, sir. I'll leave. But as soon as I opened my mouth, he gave my head a shake and said, I told you to hurry back. Now, where have you been? He gave me a shove and said, get back in line with your mama. I looked up and down the line to see who was supposed to be my mama when a woman pointed her finger at her feet and said, Clarence, you get over here right now. 